God bless you, family. God, welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock. It's good to see you another day, another day to be alive here on earth and to live a life according to the scriptures. That means that we can live a life in abundance. Jesus didn't come for good people to make them better or to make them gooder, if that's a word. Jesus came to give dead people life. And once we were born, we were born into a life of sin, right? In the natural And Jesus gave us an opportunity to be born again, supernaturally. So we have an opportunity every day to make a decision to trust, believe, hope in, to work the life that God wants us to work in and allow him to work his life through us and to every single person um, that we live in front of. We need to be living our lives like Jesus. Easy task? I don't think so. With Jesus living it through us? Allow him to live it through us, then it could be possible. I think, I really think that I can't be a Christian, I can't live a Christian life unless Jesus Christ himself, through his spirit, is living it out through me. That's just my my concept of how the Christian walk works. I think it would only work if we allow God to work it through us. Amen? Because, let's face it, I can't do everything right, but God can. I'm not perfect, but God is. And people, every time I say that, I hear echoes of people saying, you are perfect. You're perfectly made by God. Yes, God made me perfect. God made you perfect. I'm talking about behavioral things. I'm talking about the way we live our lives. So today I'm going to be talking about living life. How are you living your life? Are you living your life honorably, honorably living your life for God? Or are you one of those such people where we read, I'm going to read two scriptures. I'm going to be in... Titus chapter 116, I'm going to be Titus 116, and I'm going to also be in 1 Peter 215. And we're going to compare these two scriptures, because some people are living a different way than what the scripture says, or how the scripture says we should be living. They're actually, you know, raising their hand and saying they belong to the kingdom of God, and as soon as the um, hand is down from being raised, they're living a different way. So the question would be, and the question stands for me, how am I living my life? Am I living my life for God or am I living my life to prove something to somebody else or a double life? You know, I just had a big disappointment um, earlier this year. Was it this year? I think it was this year or last year. And um, someone I followed for years and years. And it, it was just so light crazy when I find out a scandal comes out afterwards. You know, usually somebody who's in a public eye, a public speaker, an uh, evangelist, a Christian, uh, this man so happened to be uh, an itinerant preacher. Like he would travel around the world preaching the gospel, contending for the faith, defending the faith of, the, of Christianity. And I followed him for years. I'm not the only one that followed him. He had millions of followers. And then he goes to be with the Lord, right? And then a scandal comes out. And they find out that he was living a double life. And you would you would think, when I heard that news, you would think I was this man's son or a relative or something. But I took it really hard. First, I denied that. I didn't believe that. I thought it was all, uh, you know, how they try to trash people's names. And then the ministry actually admitted, after an investigation, the ministry actually admitted that it was true. And that rocked me. And I was like, Wow. Um, how was he living this life in front of so many millions of people one way? And then when he was off the public stage, he was living a different way. And I was like, was it worth it? You know, so he would, you know, I don't mention the name because, uh, you know, there's, I don't, there's no reason to mention his name. But he's very famous. But was he living an honorable life or he was like such people that say they love God and they live totally different? So I'm going to compare two scriptures. We're going to read them both together. Amen. And can't point fingers at anybody. and I won't point fingers. But the scripture really confronts us. The scripture, the word of God confronts us. Amen. And that's a, a confrontation that a lot of people don't want. That's why they stay away from the word of God, from God himself, from Christians, from Jesus, from anything that has to do with God. They stay away because they don't want the confrontation. And a person like me, I want a confrontation from the Word of God. I need to check myself, amen, um, to see if I'm still in the faith sometimes. Because 
life happens, temptation, the lust of the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, you know, the world system, and everything that's trying to drag us back into our old ways, it never sleeps. Uh, that type of activity goes on and on and on and on. So we have to be alert. We have to be awake, right? We have to be in the word. We have to be prayed up and we have to stay ready. We have to get ready and stay ready uh, for the t- re- return of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Also on the screen, you're going to see a uh, QR code um, that I made. And if you scan that, you're going to really see if Jesus really saved your life. You're going to really see if God did you really give your life to the Lord? Did you really give your life to Jesus or you gave your life to a religion? You're going to find out if you scan that code afterwards or, you know, whenever you can. So God bless you. My name is Brother Sam Lopez, DJ Sam Rock. Good morning, Devo. Mondays through Fridays, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I try. Today I'm a little late, but I try to do that. And for the podcast listeners, it doesn't matter to them because they listen whenever time they want to listen. And you can watch this from whatever time you want to watch this. Um, if you don't have time to watch the whole complete now, you can watch it as it replays um, throughout the week. Amen. So with that said, let's pray. And then we're going to share um, this video to as many people as we can. If you're on the podcast, you can share the podcast to as many people that come to your mind as well. Good morning, Sister Joyce. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So let's pray. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, it'll be a good time to leave those things now. On the, on, the, on the live stream also, um, there should be a way to contact me, connect with me from whatever platform you're listening to the podcast. There should be a way to connect, to send your questions, comments, concerns, or prayer requests as well. So, you know, don't be afraid. Don't hesitate. If you want something to, sh- you have something to share, but you want it to share privately, you want it to be private, you could also inbox me on social media and that's behind the scenes and I'll, I'll see it and I'll leave it in private. Um, and also, if you're on a podcast, you could email me at DJ Sam Rock at Soulwinners with a Z dot org, and you could connect with me. Amen. However, I can help you. However, I can pray for you. I will, no hesitation. Um, and if I don't have an answer to one of your questions, I'll find someone who does. And if that person or those people that I um, bring the question to can't answer it, and then we'll go to the Word of God and we'll try to figure it out, study the Word of God, and let God. Allow God to speak um, the answer to us because he is the answer. Jesus Christ is the answer to all our questions. Amen. He has the questions to life, death, um, eternity, destiny, morality. He has the answers to all of that. Origin. He has the answers to all of it. So, Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for another day to be alive. I pray, Lord God, that the life that you have given me and giving so many of your children all around this earth will be radiant, will be powerful, will magnify who you are, glorify your name, that we will live honorable lives in front of other people who do not believe. And I pray, Lord God, that during the struggle of life, that we will not turn into such people who live lives um, differently, according to um, disobedience, according to the lust and the, of the flesh, according to those actions um, that we struggle not to take. I pray, Lord God, that you strengthen us when it comes to anything that's not honoring your name. I pray a hedge of protection over my life and over every single viewer and every single listener's life right now. Hedge of protection. I pray health, strength, and protection over every single person that's connecting and that's going to connect later on or that's connected right now um, to this ministry. And I pray for Aquarian angels, minister angels, warring angels to demolish all um, the principalities of evil over our generation right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that by faith in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's take a minute to share this out. When we come back, the first scripture uh, I'm going to be in is Titus chapter 1, verse 16. So get ready, buckle up. Um, this is a, a verse that will confront us. This verse will confront confront us if we're honest. Amen. And we're allowing God to move in our lives. Brother Damon, good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So let's take a minute to share this out. And we're going to go into two scriptures today. Amen. And... Just brace yourself. This is all in love. This is all the word of God has really, I'm not really speaking on it. God is speaking on it through his word by the power of his spirit. Amen. Um, So I love you. Um, I'll be right back after this minute.
right, we're back, we're back. Apologize for the little delay. It went right into the next queue. But here we are. The first scripture, are you ready? Are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? And this scripture, um, when I woke up and I read it, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. We have to talk about that? I was trying to ease my way out of it. Amen. And God yeah, was like, nah, let's deal with it. Amen. Let's deal with it. Um, such a, it's such a time as this that we need to deal with scriptures that confront our lives. Amen. And not only makes us feel good, but makes us realize where we are in our walk. Titus 1.16, such people claim they know God, but they deny him by the way they live. They are detestable and disobedient, worthless for doing anything good. Let's read that out of the Amplified. That's Titus 1.16. Titus 1.16. Amplified says, They profess to know God, to recognize and be acquainted with him, but their actions, but by their actions, they deny and disown him. Isn't that amazing? They are detestable and disobedient and worthless for good work of any kind. So in other words, people, and you probably know people like this. I know people like this, that they say they know God, they love God, but their life that's being displayed is different kind of like opposite oh i'm obedient to the lord um, then they live in disobedience i love god then they have hatred for their brother and sister it's it happens and the question underneath there is has that ever described you Ooh, and i read that i was like uh, let's see you know does that mean have we messed up in any of these areas of being disobedient I guess I could raise my hand and say, yeah, I've been disobedient at times. Have I always lived out uh, my life for Christ since I got saved? Yes. But have I demonstrated his love since I got saved every single time? Absolutely not. That's just me. I'm being honest with myself. Why? Because God allows us that little space. You know, you have those little spaces in life. That something happens. Now you have a decision to make. You get cut off in traffic. Um, someone curses you out for no apparent reason. Um, someone is threatening your family or whatever. Now you have a decision to make. How are you going to respond? I can't control anybody's response. I can't control anybody's actions. But um, I should be able to control my response and my actions. And God gives that ability to every single believer. We could choose. And even people who don't know God, they could be honorable right they could live honorable lives an atheist could have an honorable life lifestyle uh an agnostic someone who's a skeptic and they could have good morals but that's not the question the question is are you such people um, that claim to know god because we're christian we're saying we know god so this falls on us more than it falls on an atheist a sinner an agnostic a skeptic a cynic it falls on us Like the question remains to a believer, are we denying God and his love? Are we demonstrating his love? Are we demonstrating what the world wants us to demonstrate, which is the flesh, pride of life, the lust of the flesh, um, the world system, everything like that? Because all that stuff is being thrown at me every day. I don't know about you. You turn on the TV, you listen to the radio, you go on the Internet, you go on social media. Do you see what I see? There's a lot of things opposing our God. There's a lot of things opposing being a Christian. There's a lot of things. Amen. Opposing our lifestyle. Amen. So, you know, how are you living? How are you living your life? Brother German, God bless you. Can't wait till later on, man. Hopefully we can get this food in our lives, right? Um, Live with the man. Amen. No, you're the man, bro. I got to get you on these. Amen. You're the man. Hey, my boy Sam, we ready. (laughs) So I got to get Brother German Hernandez, Minister German German Hernandez on these um, morning devos or maybe some virtual um, show. We've done it in the past on men's groups, amen, but um, he has a great, tremendous word and a testimony, and God continues to use him in mighty ways, amen. And the more voices you'll get to know about the Lord working in the lives of people, you will understand that this is not a religion, this is a relationship, um, because the gospel, let's break it down real quick, and then I'll go to the next scripture. The gospel is God's attempt to reach man. It's the good news about Jesus. Religion is man's attempt to reach God. Man's attempt to follow rules, to obey rules, to make rules, to make laws, and to make regulations, and to follow everything to a T, which is 
virtually impossible. I don't think there's been one day that I could think of that I've completed all the commandments, right? And that I didn't break not one. But Holy Spirit in me, this is the whole craziness, though. The crazy thing in a good way. I'm not saying crazy in a bad way. Craziness is a good way. If Holy Spirit God lives in me because I'm a born again believer, amen, and he's perfect, he doesn't sin, he doesn't lose, he always wins, and all that. How is it that I can not break free from the flesh baggage that I have, right? And how is it that I can't complete the commandments of God, like perfectly? That's because there's a relationship going on. God is not controlling every single thing that I do. He's not forcing me to be compliant with what the word says. He's allowing me to make a decision. Amen. And hopefully I make the right decision. But I have um, the Holy Spirit God, Holy Spirit God living in me, leading me into the direction of all truth, leading me into righteousness, truth, um, allowing an escape when temptation comes and all of that and reminding me of the word of God in my life. But yet, in any relationship, I don't know about you, but a good relationship that I've been in, I got a good relationship with my wife, amen, and some family and some friends and church and all that. I got good relationships. And those good relationships, they allow you space to make decisions. They don't force anything upon us. My wife doesn't force things on me. I don't force things on her because we're in a relationship. We're not in some kind of dictatorship. And I know uh, some people think that God is a cosmic cop Somewhere in the sky, you know, making sure we don't break the rules. She wants to arrest everybody who breaks the rules. Amen. Or maybe, uh, you know, uh, you know, I don't know. People think God is some kind of old man in the sky with a long beard uh, with a whip waiting to whip all the people who do wrong. But the God of heaven and earth, the God of the scriptures is a God of love, grace, mercy, justice, almighty, all powerful, omnipresent. That God that is being described in the scriptures, amen, is evident in the life of a believer. So how are you living? Live life. That's the morning Devo title, right? Live life. How are you living your life? That's That question is going to be with me all day today. How am I living my life? Amen. So that's such people. That's the, the ouch of this morning Devo. Titus 1.16. Has Titus 1.16 been a description of how you're living? And that's to believers. Amen. I, I, I would like to excuse the people who don't believe in the Lord. Amen. I don't think that really applies to you because um, you're not born again. So how would you know? Listen, before Jesus, I didn't know I was doing all this stuff. Living crazy, ratchet, you know, life. Because I only knew ratchetness. I didn't know rat- r- righteousness. I only knew righteousness. I didn't know righteousness. I knew what was right and what was wrong because I believe all of us, whether you believe in Jesus or not, we have something called a conscience, uh, something that we know what's right and what's wrong, but we still have to make a choice. Are we living in the right way or are we living in the wrong way? And since we live in a culture that makes good bad and bad good, we live in a culture that's trying to change the rules, Right, trying to redefine life, trying to redefine gender, trying to redefine marriage, trying to redefine who I am and who you are, trying to be gender neutral, all of the stuff that's coming post scripture, right? Post truth. We live in that kind of culture. Either way, Christians, we need to stick stick our head off out of that culture and be like, Hey, I'm different, I'm born again. I love people. I don't hate people. You know, I honor God. I don't dishonor God. I obey God. I don't be, I'm not disobedient and all that stuff. But the question still remains, Titus 1.16, has that ever described you? Amen. And if it is, there's something called repentance. Praise the Lord, right? God gave us even a way to repent from those type of activities in our lives. That means stop what you're doing right now and turn from that wickedness and turn to the righteousness of God. And that's all a decision. One decision could get get you back right standing with the Lord. And one decision, one bad decision can get you into uh, wrong standing with God or get you into sin. And then we have to work our way back. And sin will get you down a, a slope that will be so hard to get back up. Amen. Slippery slope because sin, the Bible says very clearly that sin is pleasurable for a season. 
But also the Bible says that sin equals death for the most part. Not every sin leads to death, but sin ultimately, if you continue willfully sinning, it will lead you to a death. So you would die. We're all going to die, but you're going to die, dying, dying, dying for all eternity. Amen. But a Christian, a person who repents and turns from that sin, stops the sin and turns to the righteousness of God and asks for forgiveness, we will live, live, live and continue to live. Although we die, the scripture says in John 11, Jesus said he is the resurrection. Although we die, we shall live. Amen. And he and Jesus even said, do you believe this? Like, if you don't believe this, then, you know, I'm still going to say it, Jesus said, because I'm all true. I'm just paraphrasing. I'm adding to it. Forgive me, Lord. But I think that Jesus, when he asked that question, is letting people know, do you believe what, that I'm the resurrection? Do you believe that I'm the one, although you die, you shall live, that I give you the power, amen, to live this life in abundance. And if you're forgiven, if you're born again, you will live continuously forever. But the opposite should apply, right? If you don't live for Jesus, you will die for yourself. Amen. So let's go to the next scripture. How about this honorable lives? And this is the good news. Like this makes you feel good, right? Um, and the scripture makes me feel good, but it confronts me with issues in my life. I don't know about you. Honorable lives. First Peter chapter 2, 15. First Peter chapter 2, verse 15. It is God's will. Because a lot of people say, what's the will of God? God has many wills for your life. Amen. But this is one of the wills of God. It is God's wills. It is God's will that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. I was just telling uh, a young lady, uh, sister, young my, one of my little sisters in the faith in Christ. I was telling her, let this person know that you are a woman of God. Let them regret the decision they made to hurt you. Live your life as a woman of God. And that right there, and she lives that way and takes my advice and takes this word, 1 Peter 2.15, she'll be in the will of God. Because the will of God, it is God's will that your honorable lives, listen to this, living life honorably will shut people down. Your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. And trust me, there are people that will make accusations against you. Because they hate your God, they hate your life, and they're ignorant. They just don't know what they don't know. Amen. Sin will leave you die, dying every day. Yes. Die, dying, dying. Um, It's crazy. It's crazy. Sister Mickey, God bless you. Welcome to the morning, Devo. Thank you so much. I'm trying. So I'm trying to just stick to the word, but I got all this brewing in my in my welcome to the morning Devo though. Brother Benny, God bless you, man. It's good to see you on the morning Devo. So, first Peter 2.15. What is an honorable life then? Because it's not being modeled on social media, I'll tell you that. Now there are people um, all over social media evangelizing social media. Amen. I'm an evangelist and I evangelize media. Long, long time ago, probably when I was two years old in the faith, um, there was prophetic word over my life that I was going to be in the media. I thought that meant TV because I'm from a different era. I thought that meant radio. I'm on the radio. I'm on some kind of television. Live streaming is a form of television. But um, when the prophetic word came, I remember I remember this like yesterday. It was a prayer walk. It wasn't, it was just with the community of believers. It, you didn't have to be from the church that made the prayer walk. And we were walking and we went by one of these buildings that had a media department. And the word came again. And out of all the people, they pointed me out to lay hands on that social media, that, not social media, that media department, part of the building, lay hands on it and pray. Amen. Because the word of God came again that I was going to be evangelizing the media. I didn't know what that all meant. I'm starting to understand what it means now through the years. And there's evangelists on this platform living life in front of people. And that's not easy. When you publicly saying something, you're going to be publicly checked. Believe that. That's street talk and that's biblical talk. Amen. If you say you're a Christian, people are going to check you, which is a good thing, right? If you're living right, if you're living your best life according to the scriptures. Yes, sin gives birth to death, right? Now, and last time I checked, whatever we give birth to lives. But, but sometimes whatever we give birth to 
dies. So God wants the things that of him to live and the things that are from the flesh and from the world, from the devil, from the enemy and all that other stuff. He wants those things to die. So I try not to feed my flesh. I try hard to feed the spirit. Amen. Blessings, Brother Sam. Blessings to the family and over your ministry. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Gino. Um, we got to link up, man. I see you at church, but we don't talk. Um, you've been real quiet. So hopefully uh, we could um, pick up from where we left off. And I got a big order coming soon to for your um, merch. Trust me. Uh, it's in the works. Amen. Brother Benny. Amen. Sending blessings to Brother Gino. I love it. Love it. So honorable lies. First Peter 2.15. It is God's will. Amen. And listen, let's 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 check our prayer life. Uh, Because I I say this a lot and sometimes I think I'm in error. If it's God's will, I say, let this, that and third happen. No, I need to know. I, Sam, need to know what the will of God is. One of his will is that we live our honorable lives. So I'm not going to say if it's God's will to live our honorable life. No, it is God's will for us to live honorable lives. Why? Because those those, that way of living will shut down the ignorance, will shut down the accusations, shut down the foolish people trying to say that our God is not real. A person who's going around saying we're believers, right? We should be changed people. That's first and foremost. We should be changing changed people. Come on. And we should that change in my life should be evidence to people that only God. Because I, trust me, people who knew me from 25 years ago, or 20 years ago even, when I first got saved around that time, um, they got to go around saying, I don't know what happened to Sam, but he's not the same person he was before. Um, you know, what happened? He don't smoke no more. He don't drink no more. He's been with a wife how long? He's been married 20-something years? That cannot be Sam. And then people will be like, if they dig deeper, they dig deeper, they dig deeper, they say, that has to be God. <laughs> right? So as long as I'm living an honorable life, doesn't have to be perfect. Thank you, Jesus. Nowhere in the scripture does God call us, to, uh, demand us to be perfect. He says, be perfect because he is perfect. That means mature in him. But he doesn't mandate, oh, if you're not perfect, you're out of the kingdom. Imagine that. It'd be an empty kingdom then. If God said, you have to come to me perfect for me to make you perfect. Ooh, that would be an oxymoron, number one. That's not the scripture, number two. And that would be impossible. And God knows um, our frailty. God deals with us in love. Amen. He deals with us in love. Oh, I'm getting a big amen from my beautiful wife, Uni Lopez. Amen. And she's blessing everyone out here. Amen. Amen. There goes a comment for Benny. Benny, so blessed to see you. Powerhouse, stand up, transparent man of God. You gotta get up with you. Amen. Amen. And there has to be some linkage, man. We gotta stay as a band of believers, man, in front of this uh, in front of this dying world, man. They need to see some life. They need to see life. Amen. On my worst day, on my worst day, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna still show life for Christ. Why? Because he's inside of me. He's living in me. I could be down, God is always up. But when I'm down, um, you know, I'm not going to run around kicking other people who are down too. Uh, I'm going to seek uh, people who I know that can lift me up. Amen. And the Holy Spirit of God is the first one that I depend on when it comes to anything in life. Because he's the one who's guiding and leading and all of that good stuff. So which one is it? Which which? How are you, how are you living? Are you living a detestable life or a life honor, honoring God? And through honesty and all that. Um, you can only answer that. God knows where you are. I don't know where you are in the walk. Amen. Rich Tyler, God bless. Our faith is in the work of Christ. It's easy to get to heaven only based on him. And our salvation is assured. And we get to walk out our salvation through relationship with Christ. Remember, religion requires you to work for your righteousness and offering no absolute salvation. Why wouldn't you find and receive Christ? Yeah. Listen, religion is too complicated. Very complicated to me, although they label me a religious person. Um, and mind you, I kind of get offended when people say I'm a religious person because when I think of religion, I'm thinking about um, unmerited right standing um, because of what I did. So I'm saying that I'm a Christian because I'm so religious and so self righteous that you know I got it right with God. That's how I think. That's how deep I take it when somebody says, oh, you're religious. Like, no, 
Um, I'd rather be known as a man of God, right? Who has a relationship with God through Christ and has Holy Spirit God living in me and have the hope of glory. And greater is he who is in me than the one who is greater. The greater is the one in me, the man in me, the Holy Spirit in me, than he who is in the world. Sorry for the babbling. Amen. It's still a little early for me. Amen. My wife says, I'm so blessed that God chose me to be your wife. Amen. You are blessed. Amen. I'm the best husband you ever had. <laughs> Amen. So with that said, those two scriptures, those two scriptures are, if you think about it, one is confronting, the other one is acknowledging. The first scripture we read was, um, and you can read it on your own, and I suggest, ladies and gentlemen, so that way um, we don't take this out of context. When I read a scripture, I'm really pinpointing, when I'm in a, when I'm in a book of the Bible, and I'm in a chapter and a verse. I'm keying in on that. But you are entitled. You're free. Please and do it. Read the whole chapter. So that way you get the whole idea of what's going on. The first scripture was Titus 1.16. Amen. Very confrontational. And I believe it's not really for unbelievers. I believe that's a question or that's a scripture for believers. And has this ever described you? You'll understand after you read that scripture. But read the whole thing. Have at it, man. Go ahead. Read the scripture. I'm really trying to provoke you to read the word more every day. How about that? Every day, read the word. When I hear religious, I hear, I, I see Pharisees. Yep. Yep. Think of the Pharisees. Yep. Me too, man. Cause I'm like, that was the religious people of Jesus time. And what did Jesus do every time he confronted them and let them know who they really were. And they didn't like, actually they hated Jesus for that. Cause they were not used to being confronted and called out. They were used to being respected. They were up in the marketplace, you know, with their robes and all that, um, you know, making sure people knew they were praying, making sure people knew they were going to the temple, making sure people knew they were fasting. You know, that's religion. Amen. Um, yeah, I do a corporate fast every year, 21 days in the beginning of the year. Join us. Amen. We make it public because we're trying to provoke the nations of believers to fast and pray. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But in my fast, to the people outside of the kingdom, they will not know I'm fasting. Unless, ladies and gentlemen, unless they ask me if I fast, I'm going to tell them the truth. I'm not going to lie. But they won't know. I could be six days without food. and I'm, I'm practically, you know what I mean? I'm so, so relying on God because I'm so weak. And But a uh, person that I work with or I see in the street or whatever, they won't know. They don't need to know. But during that time of fasting, I feel so close to the things of God, to God himself. Amen. Because um, I'm showing um, him that I'm, I'm willing to give him all I got. This is good. Good news. It's total free on our end. We get to go and live eternally happy and stress-free. <laughs> Amen. That's the kick of it all, man. That's the good news. After this is all said and done, we get an opportunity Amen. For eternal opportunity to be with the Lord um, that we've been preaching, that we've been following all this time here on earth. Roberto, God bless you, brother. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. It's good to see you, man. We got a link up as well. Amen. Rich Tyler says, no need for law and regulations that we cannot keep in our own strength, but freedom and liberty in Christ. Come on, man. That's a, that's a word right there. I couldn't do it. I don't think you could do it either. Follow all the commandments. You know, we know about 10, and I'll leave you with this. I know I keep on saying we're done. We'll leave you with this. Do you know that we know about the Ten Commandments because the Ten Commandments you know, are very popular. But did you know that, what, that the Jews, the Israelites at that time, they created and the priests, they made 613 rabbinical codes. 613 commandments that they put on top. Man, you know, I don't know. How do you do that? I can't even, I'm trying to deal with 10 and they put 613 out there. But Jesus knocked out all 613. The only one to ever do it, the only one who will ever do it and not break any of the commandments is Jesus because he's God. So he has the upper hand on that. He kind of knows the law, right? And he's the only one that could do that. So if anyone that you hear of going around saying that they uh, complete the commandments, um, respectfully, they are lying. You don't have to say, oh, you're lying, whatever. You don't have to get into a big thing. But you could already kind of narrow it down to, first of all, they're breaking one of the commandments by lying. 
No one could do it. Only Jesus did it. But we could do it through him, working it out through us. Amen. So that's why I truly believe we don't have to. I know I heard this preaching years and years ago. Oh, every day we sin. Okay. But we don't have to. I Seriously, I honestly believe I don't have to sin every day. If I have Holy Spirit in me and I'm giving him um, access, all total access to my life, I believe in those days that I'm giving him total access, I won't sin that day. It's just me. Um, you know, amen. That's because you are doing the things of the Spirit so you are being empowered as you do His will. Amen. And one of the wills of God is that we live an honorable life. And the honorable life of a believer will silence the ignorance. I'm telling you, man. Will silence the ignorance. So um, I'm out of here. So if you have any comments, leave them now. Questions, concerns, any prayer requests, leave them now. And um, hopefully we could get back together again soon. Uh, on the Morning Devo or maybe on the Blaze Bible Study. But in the meantime, God bless you. God keep you. Thank you for hanging out with me for this time. I know I showed up late. Amen. But it's, it's better to show up late than to never show up at all and to give the first of your day to the Lord. And these Morning Devos is my personal conviction to give the first that I have to Him. You know, I don't know what the future holds, but I do know who holds my future. And that's the Lord Jesus. So I'm out of here. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're blessed. There's two scriptures off Titus chapter 1 verse 16. And the second one was 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 15. Put those bad boys together and you're going to be confronted by Holy Spirit God. You're going to be confronted by the word. Amen. And that's the best thing that could happen to us. The confrontation of love, grace and mercy, justice and all that. The truth of God will not leave us ignorant. It will put us to a place of knowledge and understanding and wisdom. And once we know what we know, we can move in what we know now. We can live our life. Amen. Live our life. So live your life. Live life. Amen. How are you living your life? Peace.